How's it going guys? I'm Connor from Running Warehouse. And I'm John from Running Warehouse. And today we are going to be taking a look at some of our favorite carbon plated super shoes of 2024. Every year the super shoes get lighter, bouncier, faster. And now in 2024, there are so many good options. It's really hard to go wrong with any of the shoes we see in front of us. Yeah, Connor, the coolest thing about Super Shoes these days is that while they share the same ingredients with each other, you know, super foams, carbon fiber plates, they're cooked a little differently in the lab from these brands. And this year we have an amazing layout of Super Shoes to choose from. So we've got eight here, and I wanna start off with the shoe that I've probably put the most miles in this year so far, and that's the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. This shoe was absolutely fantastic to test out. What I really love about it is its blend of comfort and speed. It's got that tried and true Power Run PB midsole foam with the addition of the Power Run HG layer at the top that gives it a little bit more responsiveness, a little bit more explosiveness in the toe off. You've got that nice carbon fiber plate that really propels you forward. One of the highlights for me has been the upper. It's really breathable. It fits like a glove. It's got a really nice, comfortable tongue. And it's a shoe that I just love uh, running any of my miles in, whether it's easier efforts or my marathon paced efforts. It's a shoe that just really came through from the beginning to the end. Yeah, the Endorphin Pro has been a staple year after year, but another shoe that's been really good and is now on version four is the SC Elite. V4. Now, huge update for the series. I've always felt that the New Balance SC Elite was a good shoe, but now with the full Piba foam compound, it's become a great shoe. It's faster, bouncier, softer. Now it's a shoe that can compete with any of the shoes that are out here in front of us. The carbon plate is nice and stiff, and we've got some new geometries. I'll say the only negative I have for this shoe is maybe just a little bit on the heavier side at 8.1 ounces, but once you get this shoe on feet, you don't feel that weight. That ride feels so smooth and effortless. And this is a shoe I've actually really enjoyed. You know, Connor, I'll, I'll meet your 8.1 ounces and I'll raise you nine ounces with the Hoka Cielo X1. So I'm half-heartedly kidding because I did really love running in this shoe. That super high stack of Piva was wonderfully protective and efficient underfoot. So we measured here in-house at a whopping 46 millimeters in the heel. Somehow it's still World Athletics legal, uh, but for us, it really measured in that max, max stack category. And because of that, it really did make all my runs feel protective. It is a really efficient ride with this really cool banana-like geometry. So while it's not the shoe that I would choose for race day because every second matters and a shoe that's nine ounces, is just not gonna cut it for me. But there's a whole host of runners who prioritize comfort and efficiency over speed on race day. And that's gonna be who this shoe is gonna be for. Yeah, you know, John, it's really interesting to see what brands are doing right now to pack even more foam into a shoe while still maintaining that 40 millimeter limit. Another shoe that I'll put in a very similar ballpark is the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Now, this is a shoe that while technically having 40 millimeters in the heel has well over that as you kind of move through the heel into the midfoot, a lot of stack underfoot. And the other thing you notice with this shoe is the crazy geometries. The heel bevel is really wild. You feel the propulsion on this shoe. It's not a shoe for everyone. I'd say maybe a shoe like the Endorphin Pro 4, very democratic super shoe. This is gonna be for someone looking for the wildest geometries. As you go through your stride, you feel that mechanical advantage of the geometries, really propels you forward. The only thing that I would say I'd like improved in this shoe is maybe adding a little more Energy Light Plus. Right now, we've just got a top layer, but that's a really small critique because this is a fun, unique shoe that is gonna be different than any of the other shoes here on the table. Right, unique is true. Let's talk about a brand that's taking a unique approach to introducing super shoes to the market, and that's Asics, where they have two super shoes, the Asics Metaspeed Sky Paris 
and the ASICS Metaspeed Edge Paris. So these shoes released at the same time, they've got the same technologies, but as we know, they're built differently for different types of runners. So you have the Edge Paris for cadence type runner and the Sky Paris for more stride, more power oriented runner. I gotta be honest, when I was trying these shoes out, I wasn't sure how different they were gonna feel because they have the same technology, it's the same brand, right? but I can definitely tell you there is a difference in the experience here. I will say I found myself a beforehand to probably be a cadence-like runner. I pay more attention to that data uh, in my GPS analysis, and that proved to be the case here with the Metaspeed Edge. Um, I really liked how that plate is resting a little bit lower. So you've got that extra stack of Flight Foam Turbo Plus in the forefoot really felt that bounciness, that propulsion, and that really helped me through my gait cycle. I'm still early on in these shoes. They do feel really aggressive, so I'll need to put in more miles to really tell how it's gonna work for me, but I can assure everyone that this is a fast shoe, and at six and a half ounces, we're talking lightweight, as competitive as any of these shoes on the table. Yeah, and you know, we're seeing brands now not just offer one super shoe, but two super shoes, and the next brand I'll look at is Puma. We've got the Puma Fast Star 2, and this is actually gonna live side by side that Deviate Nitro Elite Series. We saw at the marathon trials recently, athletes were wearing both, and I think that really goes to show that every athlete is different, and you've gotta try on different shoes to see what works best for your stride. But what really gets me excited about the Fast Star 2 is the crazy design. So the first thing you notice is this wild plate that's exposed in the midfoot. These radical angles really give it an aggressive look. And then of course, up in the forefoot, the plate sticks out and the outsole extends, really extending your footprint and helping extend your stride. A unique design, an efficient design, and you can't forget, we've got even more Nitro Elite packed in the shoe. Now it's in the forefoot and in the heel. A lot of excitement with this shoe. Max stack, it's gonna be a fun one come marathon day. Yeah, you love to see that innovation from brands. But I think it's time for us to talk about what I think we would both agree is the top of the class of super shoes. They say cream rises to the top, Connor, and in this case, it flies. And that's the Nike Alpha Fly 3. This is a shoe that it really lived up to the hype, right? We've been hearing about it for a long time to see how it was gonna respond to maybe some of the criticisms of the Alpha Fly 2. And all of those concerns were alleviated by how incredibly uh, explosive this shoe feels, how comfort oriented it is. It can work for just about any runner, which is insane to think about your world-class athletes who are breaking records versus runners like myself who are chasing uh, BQs. So what I really loved about this shoe is this Zoom X foam in the midsole accompanied with that carbon fiber plate for propulsion and the unsung hero, the air zoom units. There is room in the super shoe space for air zoom units. And I really loved how protective it felt while also being propulsive. This is definitely the shoe that I plan on lacing up when I toe the line at the Chicago Marathon later this year. Yeah, I mean, look, Nike has been a leader in the super shoe space since it all began in 2016, 2017. And the Alpha Fly 3 continues to be an amazing shoe. We've seen world records go down in this shoe. We've seen a lot of athletes start to adopt this shoe. I think before there was a lot more Vaporfly, Alpha Fly trade-offs. Now I'm starting to see even more athletes wear this shoe. I've even found myself gravitating towards the Alpha Fly 3. I used to be a Vaporfly guy, but now the Alpha Fly is taking a lot of the elements of some of the earlier Vaporflies mixed with the earlier Alpha Flies, taking all the best elements to create the perfect shoe for me. I think Nike continues to lead the market in this space, but there are so many great options. Really, you gotta try them on for yourself, test them out, but I don't think you can go wrong with any of the eight shoes we have out here in front of us. If you're looking to try out a super shoe for yourself, you can find them here at Running Warehouse.